Good day, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. My name is Martin Damon, and today I'll take you through the process of modifying vehicles to optimize bridge carrying capacity. This webinar will cover the advantages and disadvantages of adding axles and changing the wheelbase of a vehicle. We'll aim to answer all your questions about why, when, and how to make these changes. The vehicle modifications will be validated against the US federal bridge laws, but I will also include the regulations for Georgia to show you our new feature for multi-regulation validation. All calculations will be done using the Imperial measurement system. As you know, NTEA partnered with Truck Science in 2019. We welcome all the, the NTEA members who are joining us this morning. I'm joined by my colleague Jens Helberg, who will moderate the chat and help with answering your questions. If you have the option of using a larger screen, we recommend you do so. By default, uh, microphones are muted to avoid interference. However, we welcome your participation in the session. Please use the Q&A feature to ask a question at any time, and Jens will help you out with that. We are recording the webinar for our YouTube channel, and we will send you a link to the recording once it's published. A note that the recording will not contain uh, attendee names and chat messages. Now, before we do any vehicle modifications, we need to understand the US federal bridge laws. These laws specify the maximum weight that can be carried on the interstate highway system. Bar a few exceptions, the bridge formula is used to determine the maximum weight on any group of two or more consecutive axles. So in this example here, we have 21 feet for the outer bridge distance, and there are four axles in the group. So if we substitute those values into the bridge formula, we get a maximum weight of 56,000 pounds. Therefore, to increase the carrying capacity of a vehicle according to the bridge laws, we need to add more axles and extend the wheelbase of the vehicle. However, we need to confirm these changes with the vehicle manufacturer, especially in terms of the gross vehicle weight rating. And I'll show you that again later on. We also need to consider the effect that these changes will have on turning radius and vehicle stability. There are two exceptions to the bridge formula. Single axles can carry 20,000 pounds and tandem axles are limited to 34,000 pounds when they are spaced between 40 and 96 inches apart. Some states actually allow uh, higher weights on the interstate highway system and I'll give you an example of this with Georgia a little later on as well. The bridge table is a summary of the bridge laws. This table combines the bridge formula and most of the exceptions into a simple uh, sort of matrix. Uh, we can use this table for our previous example to read the value for four axles spread over 21 feet. And we can determine the same limiting factor of 56,000 pounds without having to do the actual calculation. To demonstrate the process of modifying vehicles, I'll take you through a live demo now using our axle weight calculator. We'll start with a six by four chassis and a 16 foot dump body. I'll then add a pusher axle to demonstrate the increase in the overall carrying capacity. We'll then extend the wheelbase by three feet to have a look at the difference that the length makes in terms of the overall bridge carrying capacity. And finally, we'll add a second pusher and a longer body to optimize the configuration. I'll switch to the live demo now. In the previous web webinar of this series, we focused on gathering the information to do a weight distribution. Today, I'll take advantage of this data and select a vehicle from the public library. So for our first example, I'll select a Volvo VHD 6x4. 
with the new cab and a wheelbase of 224 inches. Notice that the vehicle opens up with the graphic dimensions and all the weights as per the proposal document that we receive from Volvo in this case. If we have a look at the dashboard, we can drill down on regulatory compliance to see that all the calculations are validated against the US federal bridge laws. Later on, I'll, sh I'll include the regulations for Georgia. So that'll be in this area here on the, on the dashboard. For now, we'll just do one regulation. There are some other features on the dashboard that I'd also like to show you. And just to give you an overview of those, we've added a feature called internal standards. This allows you to set your own minimum and maximum values on, some, on certain attributes that could be important to you. And we call these favorite measurements. So you'll see here I've got a favorite measurement, gross weight on, on the front. And currently that value is sitting at 54%. So I can watch that value on the dashboard and I've set a limit for that. So as we put together our calculation, if we go outside that range, we'll see how the dashboard will give us a warning for that. Right, to add the dump body, we'll start off with the menu on the left and I'll choose uh, the body option. And then from the different types of bodies that we offer, I'll choose a dump body and I'll go to my personal library. Now, if you attended the previous webinar, you'll remember that we showed you how to import a body using the DXF import feature. So I'll once again, just take advantage of what we've done in the past and select the Crystal 16 foot dump body. And then I'll drag it back to create a clearance of about four inches to the back of the cab. In this case, the body weight of five and a half thousand pounds does not include the weight of the hoist. So to add the hoist, I'll select that from the equipment menu. And since we don't have hoist as a category, I've added one for myself under other, and I've chosen an, a template to save an, a hoist in my personal library. So once again, I can just select that hoist and then move it into the doghouse. Now you'll notice that every time I make a change to the calculation, the payload will automatically be recalculated. And in, in this case, we've got about, or slightly more than 23,000 pounds on the vehicle in terms of payload. Now that is limited in this case by the front axle. And we can easily spot that by having a look at this, the utilization on the front axle, which is currently at set at 100%. And we ha deliberately highlight that cell to draw attention to that. So let's say I move the body back and shift the weight on the back axle. Watch how that utilization shifts to the back axle and the calculations are a change. So the payload changes slightly and the back axle becomes the limiting factor. All right, we've got slightly more payload in, in that position, but for our calculation, I will undo that change and put the body back so that the front axle is our limiting factor. To get more information about what exactly is causing that limit of 14,600, um, we can draw down on that. I can click on that to open up the front axle. We will see that the gross axle weight rating for this vehicle is 14,600. And the bridge limit, remember, for single axles is 20,000 pounds. If you're not sure where these values come from, you can always click on the information icon. That gives you more information. For example, here, for the gross axle weight rating, it's the lesser of the manufacturer's axle, suspension, and tire ratings. Okay, we often refer to this as GAWA. So I might refer to it as GAWA in, in future. And then what we do is we take the lesser of these two and apply it to the permissible value for the front axle. We can close that. Let's see if we can increase the carrying capacity of this vehicle by adding a pusher axle. To do that, we'll go to the vehicle menu and we'll find this option under weights and axles. And you'll see the flashing plus icon and all the different cards for the different axles here. 
If I click on plus, there are two options here. We can add a pusher axle or a tag axle. Now, in cases where the front axle is the limiting factor, we recommend a pusher axle because that will take weight off the front axle and off the rear axles. If the rear axles were the limiting factor, we could add a pusher or a tag axle. But for this scenario, I'll choose a pusher axle. The software will add the pusher axle with a couple of default values, which we can now customize. So I'll just give you an overview of that. For, for starters, I'll want to change the axle spacing to the driven axles. And then I want to change some ratings on that axle, maybe even the weight of the axle. And the last item that I sometimes forget to check is the gross vehicle weight rating. So remember I mentioned early on when we add axles, we need to go back to the, to the manufacturer or the dealer and find out if we can increase the gross vehicle weight rating when we add more axles. So I'll start off with the axle spacing. Let's say I click on that dimension, you'll see it's hyperlinked. So I can just click on it to open a mini menu and I'll change that to 48 inches. As soon as I made that change, you may have noticed that the wheelbase changed from the original 224 to 220. Now there are quite a lot of moving parts when changing axle spacing here. So what I suggest doing here is locking down that wheelbase. So I'll click on that wheelbase, override it, and change it back to the original of 224. Any further changes I make now to the axle spacing will not affect the wheelbase. So to demonstrate that, let's say I move that axle, the pusher axle forward, you'll see the wheelbase is now locked down and I can move the pusher axle in relation to the driven axles. And I'll move it back to 48 inches. All right, so that takes care of the positioning of the axle. Next, we can have a look at some of the actual attributes of the axle. To do that, we can just click on the axle in the graphic and then have a look at the information that we have here. So on the pusher axle tab, we've got weights, axles, and tires. I'll start off by changing the weight of the axle. Let's say this axle, together with the wheels and tires, weighs 1,480 pounds. Then I'll go down a bit and have a look at Gawa for the axle. That's 13,000 pounds from the manufacturer. And again, 20,000 for bridge. And then the permissible will then therefore also be 13,000. But right at the bottom here, we've got quite an important attribute. We've, we've called this maximum weight. And I will come back to that in a minute because this value is used in determining how the weight is distributed between the pusher and the driven axles. But for now, I want to finish customizing the axle and then I'll come back to this maximum weight. So we can move on to the axle tab itself, where you'll see that this is a lifting axle by default. Just to demonstrate that, I'll just move that out the way and raise the axle. So there's an op option here where you can move the axle up and down. In the up position, the vehicle converts to a six by four. And if I drop the axle again, the calculations add a column for pusher, and all rear axles. So you have that option of raising the axle in case you want to do any calculations with the axle in, in the up position. Okay, we'll leave it down for now. And then on tires, you'll notice we have two tires on that pusher and I will change the tire radius to 19 inches. Those are normally slightly smaller than the tires on the driven axles. Okay, so that's Second part of customizing that axle. Remember the last step, which is an easy one to forget, and that's to check the gross vehicle weight rating. Now, the software will most probably draw your attention to this in any case, because you'll notice that the limiting factor is now the total column, where the limit is 54,600, utilized 100%. Our payload has gone from 23,000 to almost 30,000 pounds. And if I drill down on that permissible limit, I'll see immediately that it's actually the gross vehicle weight rating. 
of 54,600 that is now the limiting factor. So in this case, we can talk to the dealer and in the, the Volvo have given us a value of 67,600 for this vehicle with a pusher axle. And as soon as we apply that, you'll notice that the permissible maximum now shifts to the bridge limit, which is 56,000. That gives us a few hundred more pounds of payload and shifts the limiting factor from the total column to the tri-axle at the rear, which is now rated at 42,000 and causing the, the limit to the, to the payload. All right, maybe a good time now just to show you the detailed breakdown of all the bridge groups. So that 42,000 is a bridge limit. Obviously, all, uh, um, quite a few of these are bridge limits. And I'll just show you on the right-hand side, we have different view options. And I'll click on the bridge view option to give us a detailed breakdown of the most important bridge groups. I'll start with the front axle, axle one. Remember that's limited to 20,000. That same limit applies to the pusher axle, axle two. Then axle three to four, which are the two driven axles. Remember those are limited to 34,000 pounds for tandems that are between 40 and 96 inches in terms of their spacing. Then axle two to four, which is a triaxle group, which is now the limiting factor. That's limited to 42,000 pounds. Now, maybe just go back to the bridge table to show you this. So 102 inches, I'll convert that to feet. That's about, that's eight and a half feet. So on the bridge table, we can read this from this option here, more than eight, less than nine feet. Three axles in the group, that's 42,000. And the next one you'll see is the 21 uh, feet uh, with four axles, giving us 56,000. Let's go back to that. So the last group. So once the dimensions for the bridge groups exceed 120 inches, we show the dimensions in feet and round them to the nearest foot in this case. So 20 feet and 11 inches will round up to 21 feet. If that was 20 inches, uh, 20 feet and six inches, we would also round that up. So at halfway, we round up to the nearest foot. Okay, and that's the 56,000 limit. To go back to our summary view, just to explain this, we've got the overview option and that pops out and gives us a few different choices and I'll choose summary. That's the default view for all the, uh, for, for the weights table with all the different columns. Okay, so now adding axles does complicate the weight distribution calculation somewhat. So before we carry on, I will go back to the pusher axle and to the maximum weight, just to explain this. Now, the 13,000 limit here, or note that this 13,000 limit of maximum weight on the pusher axle well, is not the actual weight carried by this axle. So you'll notice that the actual weight at the moment is just over 10,000 pounds. So that the, this vehicle will only, or this axle, the pusher axle, will only reach 13,000 pounds when the gross axle weight rating on the rear axles reaches, when, they, when it reaches that limit. And that limit on the rear axle is 40,000 pounds. So only when we reach the GAWA on the rear driven axles will the pusher axle reach its maximum limit of 13,000 pounds. To demonstrate this, I will increase the payload to 42065, which I've worked out in advance. And at that payload, we will get exactly 40,000 on the driven axles. And now you can see that the pusher axle reaches a gross of 13,000 pounds. And if we convert this ratio of 13,000 to 40,000 to a percentage, you'll see that that that's a 25% split between the pusher and the driven axle. So 25% of the weight on all rear axles is carried by the pusher and 75% is carried by the driven axles. 
And that, that uh, split, that percentage split between the pusher and the driven axles is applied even when the driven axles are not loaded to the maximum. So if we reduce the payload back to the legal maximum of 29,000, you'll notice that both the driven axle weights and the, the weight on the pusher will drop, but the ratio is still the same. So we still have 25% of 42,000 on the, all rear axles will be on the pusher and 75% on the driven. For example, if you wanted to change that ratio, you could override the maximum weight and let's reduce that to 10,000 and watch what happens. Driven axle weight will drop slightly to 8,400 pounds, which is now in fact 20% of the weight on all rear axles. So that ratio of 10,000 to 40,000 on the two driven translates into 20% and 80%. Okay, for our calculation, I'll deselect the override and go back to 13,000 pounds. Okay, that starts uh, or that explains um, some of the calculations that are coming next. And once we've determined this distribution between the pusher and the driven axles, we can now calculate the technical wheelbase. So you'll notice this vehicle now has two wheelbases. So the first wheelbase is the original wheelbase of 224 inches. And for, the, for this exercise, I'll call it the physical wheelbase because we can measure this wheelbase. It's measured from the steering axle to the center of the rear driven axles. The technical wheelbase is calculated and is used to distribute the weight over the front and all rear axles. And the way we calculate that is based on that 25-75 ratio. Now I will go back to the slides later on and show you the detailed breakdown of these calculations. For the purpose of this exercise, I will focus more on explaining the logic. Okay, so once we have the technical wheelbase, we use that to distribute the weight of all the different components over the front and rear. Now I'll start with the chassis weight and You'll, you'll notice that the chassis weight now actually includes the pusher axle. And we've got a separate view for this to make it easier to understand, which I'll pick from overview and chassis. We will notice that we go back to the original chassis weight in the six by four configuration. So we only have weights on axle one front and the driven axles at the rear. So we start off by recalculating the distribution of the original chassis weight over the front and the rear. That gives us the recalculated chassis weight. We then add the pusher axle and also distribute it according to the technical wheelbase. We then total the columns to give us the modified chassis weight. And that modified chassis weight is transferred to the summary page again. You'll find it there. All the other items like fuel, the body, the hoist, the payload are then distributed in, in, in the same way using the technical wheelbase. I'll quickly show you the center of gravity view and the summary option there just to demonstrate that. So let's say we have the fuel, we can pin these center of gravity symbols, that's for the crew. So all of these items are distributed according to their position from in relation to the technical wheelbase. So we have the technical wheelbase here and we know the dimension to either the start or end of the wheelbase. And that makes it easy to do these calculations by taking turning moments about a point. And again, don't worry about the details of the calculations now. I will come back to those later. I'll go back to overview and summary. And what we'll do next is we'll see if we can optimize this vehicle further by adding a second pusher axle. So right now we're sitting on nearly 30,000 pounds and we'd like to increase that more if possible. Now it may look like we have enough chassis space available here to add another axle. However, it's quite likely that there could be equipment here such as the fuel tank, um, the def tank, exhaust or even the battery box that uh, prevents us from adding another axle 
in this chassis space here. Now we deliberately do not display those components in the graphic because of the many different options and layouts that the manufacturers provide. But just to give you a graphic representation of this, I will go to other equipment and add a fuel tank. So I'll click on add here, go to other, and we have a few sample fuel tanks under other equipment that we can add for graphic representation. So I'll drag that down. This fuel tank has no weight. It's just to show me that that is where the fuel tank will be positioned. And you could do the same with the battery, battery box, the DEF tank. You can import those as DXF uh, items and then position them anywhere on the chassis. This makes it easier for us to see now that we cannot fit another axle into the chassis space. So the next step would be to first increase the wheelbase before we can add that second pusher. But before I do that, I will save this calculation because this is also the calculation that I want to use for the Georgia regulations. So let's call this a four axle dump truck. And we'll come back to that calculation later on. All right, let's carry on by extending the wheelbase. There are, not, there are two options or two methods that we can use for this. The first one is to swap out that original chassis. And we can do this from the vehicle menu. And there's a swap feature at the top right here. Swap vehicle. And again, we can search through the public library and find, possibly find a vehicle with a suitable wheelbase and pick that and it will swap out the chassis. So that's the one option. If you don't find a suitable chassis with the correct wheelbase that you're looking for in the public library, you can also make this change manually. And I will, I will do that for this exercise. I will actually just change the wheelbase by clicking on it and increasing it to 260. So let's say that's our wheelbase. Watch what happens when I enter that value. Watch what happens to the overall bridge carrying capacity of 56,000. So as soon as I enter that value, it increases to 58,000 pounds. So an extra 2,000 pounds just for the extra length that we're applying here. Now, there's something else that's easy to forget when, uh, uh, when extending the wheelbase, and that's to update the chassis weight. So that extra bit of ch chassis that we've added now uh, will add a little bit of weight. To do this, we can click on the chassis weight front, and you'll see there we have the original chassis weight, which in this case I'll, I'll increase by about 100 pounds. So these values we got from uh, Volvo, and that value is 8852. So an extra 100 pounds on the front, and this a similar thing will apply to the rear. So the rear chassis weight for the 6x4 layout will increase to 7695. Okay, so 200 pounds for the extra three feet, it's not entirely insignificant. Um, so it is good to always put accurate uh, chassis weights into the calculation if you do change the wheelbase. Um, I'm going to bring up some polls now on the screen to get some feedback from you. And the, and the first will be actually on that pusher axle. And the second one will be on, on changing the chassis weights. And um, I'll, start, I'll start with the chassis weights. So we have had requests from some customers to estimate the chassis weights when changing the wheelbase. So that there's already a sort of default estimated value, which takes into consideration the distance by which we're changing the wheelbase, but still allows you as a user to, to override that value if you don't like the estimated value. So that'll be the first poll. And I'll, I'll put that up on the screen now. So let's, let's start with that. I'm going to choose the wheelbase and I'll launch that. And I'll just read that out there and then you can pick, it, pick one of those options. So when changing the wheelbase, I prefer updating the front and rear chassis weights myself or having the weights automatically estimated. And the third option, I don't feel strongly about this. 
So please select one of those. I'll leave that up there for a few more seconds. Okay, so we're getting some good feedback there. All right, I'll end that poll now. I'll just give it maybe a few more seconds. I think that's good. Okay, I'll end it and I'll just share those results with you. Okay, so that's, that's good feedback. So most of you have actually said having the weights automatically estimated. So this is the kind of feedback that helps us in our planning for features that we develop um, going forward and it helps us prioritize what we do next. So the more people that vote for the same feature, the more likely it is that that feature will be improved or added in, in future. Okay, so I will stop that. And another way of getting in touch with us, if you have any suggestions, anything else, you can use a chat feature in the bottom right and uh, send us a message. So we welcome any feedback that you give us about improving the software. And the second poll relates to the, to the pusher axle. And I'll go back to the polls now and I'll just bring that up and go through it with you. I'll launch that. Okay, so when, when uh, specifying the maximum weight on the pusher, remember how we use the maximum weight to calculate the ratio between the, uh, how the weight is distributed over the pusher and the driven axles. Now we have had feedback from some customers who would prefer to specify the actual weight. So let's see which method you would prefer here. So when adding pusher or tag axles, do you prefer to specify the maximum weight as we've got it at the moment? Or would you prefer to specify the actual weight that's imposed on the ground by that pusher axle? Or if you don't feel strongly about this. Okay, I'll leave that up there for a few more seconds. Okay, that's, that's uh, interesting feedback again. I'll share that with you now in that poll and just share that. So most of you are actually quite happy with the current method that we've got, where we specify the maximum weight and have that distribution ratio or percentage between the axles. And then some of you have said you'd like to specify the actual weight. All right, that, that's, that, that is good feedback. This is prob possibly something that could go under preferences and I might just show you that. I'll stop sharing that. So some of these features will come with your preferred or you can set your preference. So under settings, we have options here called preferences where you can, for example, uh, specify how you'd like to uh, specify chassis, the chassis dimension, either as wheelbase or would you prefer to specify the CA dimension. So in future, we could consider adding a, an option here for you to either specify the maximum weight on a pusher or to specify the actual weight. So that's uh, where that would fit in. Okay, thank, thanks for that uh, feedback. All right, so now that we've increased the wheelbase, and we've had a look at the effect that it has on, on, on our bridge. We can remove this body and replace it with a more suitable one. So I'll remove it using the scissors here. And I'll replace it with a longer body, a 19 and a half foot body, also from Christel. I'll move that back to create a clearance of let's say eight inches and move the hoist into the dog, dog house. All right, that vehicle is now ready for our second pusher axle. We should have enough space in the chassis for that. Again, I'll go to the vehicle menu, weights and axles, add, and we'll add that second pusher. Again, we can customize it by changing the spacing, move it a bit closer, maybe 48 inches again from the second, from the first pusher. And we can click on the axle and change the weight to 1480. We'll leave the Galway at 13,000 again, and we'll leave that maximum weight at 13,000. So it carries the same percentage of weight as 
the first pusher that we added. And you'll see that here. So each of these pushes now carries just slightly less than 10,000 pounds. And the driven axles, roughly 30,000. Okay, now we've come to the end of optimizing this vehicle. You'll notice that the payload has increased from the 29,000 that we had on the four axle layout to almost 36,000 pounds on this five axle layout. And again, if we draw down on the limiting factor here, for overall, we'll see that bridge, the bridge limit of 63,000 is the limiting factor. We still have sufficient gross vehicle weight rating. So we don't need to increase that any further. We can close that. All right, it looks like the balance of the weight distribution over all the axles is very good. None of the axles are, are uh, overloaded or very near their capacity. I suppose the, the quad axle group at the rear, two to five, very close to the limit, 99.1%. Uh, the front axle underutilized by, let's say, or has an unused capacity of about 1,600 pounds. This is a good opportunity to show you the internal standards feature on the dashboard. I will drill down on that to show you that we currently have a green tick on the gross weight on the front axle. Remember, I set this limit to a minimum of 20%. So I want at least 20% of the gross weight of the entire vehicle on the front axle. And the reason for that is we want enough down, downward pressure on, on the road so that when we turn the steering and take a turn, that the vehicle actually turns and doesn't go straight ahead. So it is a bit of a safety limit to have a certain percentage of the weight on the front axle. And you can set your own guidelines for that. For example, if this weight was distributed more to the rear, Let's say we loaded this vehicle heavy to the rear. I could change the center of gravity of the payload. I can shift that to the rear. You'll see the C CG symbol moving to the rear. And as soon as the weight on the front axle becomes less than 20%, a red cross will appear to warn me that I'm outside of my predefined range. I'll move that C CG back. I'll get back over 20% and I'll get the green tick again. Okay, to demonstrate how you can control these internal standards, you can click on settings. And on the dashboard, you'll see we've got the internal standards set up here where the minimum, we have specified that minimum of 20% for the gross weight on the front. Then we can add more of our own internal standards here. Let me give you an example of this. So under favorite measurements, we also have that gross weight. That's what's shown there. If I click on this dropdown, there's a whole list of attributes that we can display. I will pick, let's say, frontal area of the vehicle. I'll scroll down and pick maybe turning radius curb to curb. I'll close that dropdown and I'll create an internal standard, let's say for frontal area. So let's say we want the frontal area to be no more than 100 square feet. So I'm not too concerned about the minimum, but I'm concerned about the maximum. I want the maximum to be no more than 100 square feet. I will not set a limit on the turning radius. I just want to show that as a favorite measurement. So if I click on OK, You'll see how it updates the dashboard on the left. So now I have frontal area of the vehicle, also green tick, because it's calculated at, at 87 square feet. So it's, with, it's less than 100. The, the gross weight is more than 20. And the turning radius is just a value that I like to, to have on the dashboard. OK, so that's, that's it for this vehicle combination. I will save this. Of combination as, as a different one to the first one we did. I'll click on Save As and make this our five axle dump truck because I now want to go back to that four axle dump truck to show you the inclusion of, of the, the regulations for Georgia. 
So in case there are any questions about this one, we can always go back to it. So I'll go home now. Go back to the vehicle selection screen where I can click on my save calculations and pick that 4XL dump truck that I had saved earlier on. Okay, that'll open up the calculation as we'd saved it with that payload, remember, of nearly 30,000 pounds. I drill down on regulatory compliance. You'll see we're currently only validating against the federal regulations. So to include Georgia and to make sure that none of the values change, I will make sure my payload is locked down. So I'll click on payload and I'll have overridden the payload because I don't want the payload to be recalculated when we include Georgia. I want to see can this vehicle carry 29,000 pounds in Georgia. So I'll click on settings and again go to the dashboard. You'll see we have an item here regulations applied. So on the drop down, we can scroll down. There's a whole list of uh, regulations we've got for the different states, and we'll find Georgia. So these are the federal regulations for the states. And I can minimize that drop down, click on OK, and watch what happens to the permissible total. So the bridge carrying capacity is, is now reduced to 51,500. And we have a red cross on the dashboard to indicate that we're not complying with the regulations for Georgia. To get more details about this, I will drill down on that and it will show me that it's actually the bridge limit that's causing the, the violation. Dimensions and turning radius are still fine. If we wanted to, we could go back to the bridge view on the right, and we'll find it here as well. So the bridge permissible has now been reduced from 56,000 to 51,500. Now, the reason for this is that the authorities in Georgia do not like lifting axles. So, to over, so, so they exclude any lifting axles in the overall bridge calculation. So for the outer bridge, the lifting axles are excluded. So they would see this as a three axle vehicle, but as with a outer bridge distance of 21 feet. So if we quickly go back to that bridge table, we'll see that at 21 feet, but with only three axles being considered for the group, we are limited to 51,500. Okay, so to overcome this uh, limitation, we can make the pusher axle non-lifting. So I'll click on the axle, go to the axle tab, and deselect lifting axle. So that axle now cannot be raised. And as soon as I do that, that axle will be included in the group again and the permissible increases to 56,000. Okay, we can go back to our summary view again and just check the dashboard, got green ticks everywhere again. Okay, I did mention early on that some states like Georgia allow higher weight limits on, on the interstate highway systems system in their uh, state. I'll give you ex an example of this now. So I'll draw down on regulation uh, and show you we've still got two regulations here, Georgia and federal. And I want to remove the federal regulations. To do that, I'll go back to settings and then remove the federal regulations. And when I do this, you'll notice, I'll point it out to you, that 34,000 limit on the tandems will change. So if I click on OK now, that limit will increase to 40,000. And if I draw down on that, I'll see that, in fact, it's the GAWA on the rear driven axles that is now the limiting factor because the bridge limit in Georgia for tandems, in this case, uh, is 40,680. So that's quite a bit more than the 34,000. That's almost 7,000 pounds more. And if we have a look at the details of all the bridge groups in Georgia, again, I'll go back to the bridge view. 
you'll see that even that the front axle and the pusher axle have a slightly higher rating than the normal 20,000. So there's an extra 340 pounds there. Tandem's 40,680. The triaxle and the overall have the same limits as the federal bridge laws. There is one, there, there is a, an exception to that rating of 40,680 being applied to tandems. And that is that if the gross vehicle weight exceeds 72,380, then the federal bridge laws will apply again for the tandems and they'll be limited to 34,000 pounds. So in this case, because the gross vehicle weight is less than that amount, we qualify for the higher limit on the tandems. <clears throat> so you can take advantage of this higher limit, perhaps in a six by four axle layout configuration. So in, the, in this case, we are not taking full advantage of the 40,000 pounds because we only have 31,000 pounds on the, on the driven axles. But if you had a six by four rigid vehicle, maybe with quite a long wheelbase and a flatbed body on it, you would be able to utilize that higher uh, rating much better. Okay, that almost brings us to the end of the live demo. I still want to show you the turning radius calculation. And for that, I want to remove the pusher axle because the pusher axle does not influence the turning radius. The pusher axle would normally be a self-steering axle and therefore not affect the, the turning radius, or obviously it could be raised. But to simplify the calculation, I will remove the pusher axle and I'll maximize our payload again. Okay, we're not going to fo focus on the payload carrying capacity here. We are only going to focus on the, the turning radius. So this is our original wheelbase of 224. And if I choose the option for turning radius, and the smallest turning radius, we get a top view, and at the maximum inner steering angle, we get a curb to curb uh, radius of just over 400 inches or 33 feet. So if we now increase the wheelbase, we want to see what that does to the turning radius. So let's say we increase the wheelbase to 260. Notice how that changes the curb to curb radius by about 50 inches or four feet. So the disadvantage of increasing the wheelbase is that the vehicle is obviously slightly less maneuverable because it has a bigger turning, turning radius. Okay, that brings us to the end of the live demo. Just want to check in with Jens there to see if there are any questions so far. Uh, there aren't any questions so far. Um, so you've done a great job of explaining uh, the, the subject matter, Martin, by the looks of things, but I'd like to invite anyone that has a question to ask it now, and, uh, and Martin can, um, can drill down and try and answer it for you. Yeah. I'll wrap up the presentation then with a few more slides. Remember early on I mentioned I've got the slides for those calculations for the, modi for the, orig for the modified chassis weight. So we've put together these five slides and uh, these slides are also included in the recording for you to go through in more detail. So I'll just go through them fairly quickly. And then the first step, we simply note the overall chassis weight and the center of gravity from the front axle. Then in the second step, remember we determined that distribution ratio between the pusher and the driven axles. And we used the maximum weight and the gower on the, on the rear axles and the driven axles to determine that ratio to get us 75% on the driven and 25% on the pusher. And then in the third step, we use the ratio from the previous step to calculate the new technical wheelbase. Remember the technical wheelbase is used to distribute the weight of the front and rear and can be different to the physical wheelbase. In step four, we recalculate the original chassis weight over the front and rear using that new technical wheelbase. And that's why we noted the original chassis weight and the original center of gravity from the front axle. 
So we just redistribute that front and rear. And then once we know the weight on all the rear axles, we simply apply the 25, 75% ratio of, uh, to calculate how much of that goes on the pusher and how much onto the driven axles. And then in the last step, we also distribute the pusher axle using the same method, total the columns to give us the total uh, new modified chassis weights. Okay, like I mentioned, you can obviously go through these slides in a little bit more detail yourself. You can check the formulas that, are, that we've provided and you're welcome to get in touch with us directly if you have any more questions on that. Hopefully these slides will make it easier to understand those, those calculations. You can visit trucksigns.com to register for a free seven day trial of the app. NTEA members qualify for an extended 30 day uh, trial period. A normal subscription to the software costs 38 US dollars per month. NTEA members get get a 10% discount on that. And then uh, we will be publishing a, the recording of this webinar on our YouTube channel and uh, send you the link. You can also watch previous webinars on, on there. And um, please remember to subscribe to the Truck Science channel on YouTube to be notified of any new recordings as they are added. And then maybe just um, before we end, Jens, are there any more questions? Yes, Martin, there's a, there's a couple of um, questions coming through here now. Uh, so, so the first one is uh, someone has asked um, when they go into a semi-trailer template and they try to add an axle, it says it's not yet possible to add or remove the axles. Try starting over with a trailer template with the desired number of axles. Um, is this option to add axles only available for truck bodies? Yes, okay, thank, thank you for that. That option is currently only available for the vehicle. So if trailers, um, we, we don't have that available for trailers yet. It is something that has come up a couple of times. If you have yeah, liftable axles, also steering axles on the trailer. So thank you for that. We will just add your name to that feature uh, or, or your vote effectively to get it bumped up slightly higher in terms of the priority. Uh, then another, another comment is um, when setting up a dump truck for asphalt use, a key measurement is the rear overhang. Most customers do not want to use a spill shield, so would like to see that measurement. We'll just toggle back to that calculation. And I'll just go back to the side view. Okay, the rear overhang. Okay, I know exactly what you're asking about. I'm just going to move this body slightly back. Now, there, we show the rear overhang, in this case, from the rearmost axle. And I know that you want to show it from the center of the tandem. So we are working on a feature right now already, which is will be released maybe in, in a month or so, where we will show the rear overhang from the center of the driven axles. So that dimension is currently not missing. You see there's actually space for it there. So we will show that total dimension and hopefully that will answer that question. And, and that, that dimension then uh, perhaps could be added as a, as a favorite dimension and, and appear in the, in the dashboard also. Yes, yes. It can be calculated manually here. So it's simply the 28 inches. Uh, let's just move that body slightly further back. So we can even see if the body protrudes it's three and a half inches of protrusion, 28 inches to that axle. And then we can take half of the axle spacing that 58.5 to get to the center of, of that axle. So it's, oh, there's the 27 inches there. So just a little bit of math to do it, but it will be better to show that dimension here. Yeah. Okay. Um, that, those are all the questions that, um, that have come in. Um, okay. Thank you for that. Please, can we ask you to take a moment to, to uh, give us some feedback and to rate this webinar? Uh, this feedback page will appear in your browser as soon as I end this webinar. You can also add questions and comments. 
Uh, you can, and you know, any questions that you have for us, we'll get back to you directly. You can even request a personalized demo for your organization. And note that the ratings and comments will not be made public. So that those will just keep internally for ourselves and we'll obviously communicate directly with you. So that brings us to the end. Thank you for joining us today. We really look forward to your feedback and uh, goodbye everyone.